Let me invite you to turn with me to Luke and chapter 19. Luke and chapter 19. We will read together verse 41 to verse 44. Luke 19 verse 41 to verse 44. The Bible reads there, As Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. And said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Let's pause for a brief word of prayer. Eternal God in heaven, we thank you once again for the opportunity you have given us to make bare our hearts before your word. We plead that with the help of your spirit, you might speak to each one of us. That you might hold up your son as an example for us, especially in this whole area of loving sinners. Oh, God of heaven, glorify yourself, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the subject of hyper-Calvinism is one which, for many years, was something theoretical to me. I'd never really come across a hyper-Calvinist in um, real life. It wasn't until... A few years ago, when I was asked to preach at a pastor's conference in Singapore, and I was asked to choose the subject that I would like to handle, I suggested evangelistic preaching. Soon after they advertised that on the internet, a pastor who had intended to participate in that conference withdrew and engaged um, in contention with me through email after email on the subject of evangelistic preaching. As far as he was concerned, for me to want pastors to preach the gospel to sinners meant that I was an Armenian. At first, I thought he was joking. <laughs> but one email after the other clearly showed that he meant what he said and had really dug in his heels. It was one long email after the other to the point where I finally was too tired to read any more of those lengthy emails and gave up altogether. His argument largely ran along the lines that I could only preach to regenerate sinners and in preaching to them I was to simply acknowledge that if they are regenerate then they are saved. But not preaching to all and sundry, that they must turn from sin and put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as far as this conference is concerned, it has been left to the other 
speakers to deal with the doctrinal error in such thinking. However, when I saw the theme, my heart immediately said yes and amen to this subject because of something of that experience. The realization that indeed there are individuals who claim to espouse the doctrines of grace, but in holding on to them have gone to the extreme of negating the responsibility of man. In fact, I would dare say that I would like to plead with all of us to beware of the kind of logic that finally goes beyond and against the clear teaching of scripture that brings together God's sovereignty on the one hand and human responsibility on the other. Indeed, anyone who takes just a little time to read the book that we call the Acts of the Apostles immediately sees that evangelistic preaching was part of the life of the church. The apostles went everywhere preaching repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we must do the same. 